All right, <clears throat> here we are. Let's see if you're going to stay on here, okay? This is the 0900 prayer request time. We're having a little problem again logging on to Periscope. And this seems to be the common problem with getting on to Periscope. Amen. It seems like it just wants to hang up. Hey, hi there. Welcome to the 0900 prayer request. Again, trying to log on to Periscope this morning and having a problem. So, this is the 0900 prayer request time. Today, today, I mean today, the today, 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 da, da, da. <laughs> okay, let's try it again, folks. Well, I see no viewers there, so that's, uh, that's a point taken for me. All right, well... Out there in Periscope land where there's no viewers. <laughs> so, this is the 12th of June. That's what I'm trying to say. The 12th of June, 2016. My name is Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm broadcasting once again. For all you guys who have never seen it, we're right here in Missouri. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Have been for 40 years. Telling people about the way of salvation get saved. So when they pass from this life into the next life, they'll go to heaven and not to that lake of fire. All right? Place called hell. This whole thing about religion is only about two things. Religion is about heaven or hell. There's no in-between place. Okay? So, I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and that's all I talk about, is these two things right here. And this talking, and that's prayer, talking to God, <clears throat> enables you to go into that place called heaven. And it's going to be through prayer. Alright, you're going to get saved because you're going to talk to God. You're going to become spiritually born again because you're going to have to have an honest conversation with God. It's not going to be no hoodoo stuff. It's not going to be, oh, I'll do it some other day. I'll do it next week or whatever. It'll be showdown time. All right? God's got a plan for everyone. Okay? And there's no, there's no other way. You're not going to take a shortcut to get into the kingdom of God. God's got a plan for everyone to enter the same way. There's no exception to the clause here. Uh, just because you belong to some church and been around for a long time doesn't make any difference. Even if they say they're the first church, if they say they got it all right, everything, just because you belong to it doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. Belonging to a church does not get you to heaven, folks, okay? Just, I want you to know that church membership isn't going to do nothing but drain your pocketbook over a number of years, all right? That's about all it does. It makes you feel good, but you got to be spiritually born again. you got to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I find that a lot of people try to avoid that, but the fact remains. you got to be born again. you gotta, you got to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. There is no way to get around it. You might not agree with it. You might not want to do it. But that's the simple fact. Nothing changes because you don't like it. All right. I mean, there's a lot of things I, I don't like, and you know, but I, I can't change them. All right. So today is the 0900 prayer request time again. It's about you talking to God. All right. The 0900 prayer request. Okay. Uh, let me flip you around. I'll show you some things on our map here. We have a periscope map. All right, let me flip you around here. You'll see. All right. Here we are. This is our map. And on our map, we have, uh, you, it's a little difficult to see, but there's a whole lot more than what you're seeing there. We need to do something about that, I guess. Uh, a lot of these hearts and uh, things that you see, they're difficult to see because they're not showing up very well, but they're all in the Middle East, seems to be the heaviest concentration. 
But we have people from over there on the extreme right to New Zealand contacting us all over. There's about a hundred different locations globally. So as you can see, as of June 10th, our heart count was at 192,000 and our views are only 11,000 views. So 11,000 people have come on board <coughs> trying to figure out who we are and what we're about. Amen? Okay. Well, we're pretty simple. We're, I'm going to show you some things here. Let me get it up on the screen here. <coughs> this will help you to see what we're about a little bit too. Get this to come on here. All right. This is uh, from our website. And on our website, we have an introduction on here. All right. I'm just going to run through our web page here a little bit and let you see that too as soon as we power up here. The old computer's old Epson printer here is taking a little bit to warm up. All right, let's just get this on, okay? Now, let me see if we can back this up some. Oh, let's go the other way. All right, and this is our web page, all right? As you can see, how to become a Christian today.com, all right? And on our webpage, uh, you will see when you hit the menu, I, I guess right here, you can see this is where the menu button is. I guess you can see that there. I can shoot the laser on it there, right there, all right? That's our menu button. When you click that, what you're going to see is the following the home recorded broadcast, okay? Now in Periscope, we have all of our recorded broadcasts, okay? So that means all you got to do is click that. And when you click that, that'll go to another page. And we have all of our links set up because we archive and save all of our broadcasts. I save mine and also sell them on my wife. And these go all the way back. Let's say, here's one by... May 24th by Selma called Ghost Stories. So just click that on and you'll see that it brings up the video of and then this is when Selma was broadcasting. Alright. And you'll see we'll just wait a minute it'll load up here. And this is Selma, my wife. Hi. My name is Selma Ecker. I am a Protestant Christian missionary. Okay. All right. So we can go back again. All right. So like I say, here on the page, you can go back to any of our archives, and it goes all the way back to January when we first started, the end of January. Go back to the menu button, and you go in the menu. And you look down, here's our index, chapters. We have over a hundred or so articles up already. And here is uh, something that's kind of neat, is our introduction. Religious introduction, who we are and what we're about. And then this, meaning of grace, justification, and repentance. And it's pretty, uh, it's important. Not pretty important. It is important. Not pretty. <laughs> pretty, huh? All right, so when you see this, again, we're going to go here to menu. Sorry about that. And you can go here. And we're just going to go to the introduction. All right. When you go to the introduction, this is kind of a neat function that we have here because you're able to translate this into many languages, okay? This here will help you to see who we are and what we're about. And a lot of people come on and they don't know or they don't speak English well enough to understand what we're doing. And as you know, a lot of people want to know what's going on. That's the nature of the internet, curiosity, all right? And what's different? And I guess in one sense we're different because I'm 70 years old, my wife is 69, so you don't see too many people that old on Periscope. And I think there are some millennials that kind of resent that a little bit, I think, but they can get over it, right? 
Uh, one neat thing about Periscope at this time is still free. You can broadcast on anyone can anyone can start their own broadcast. I noticed that when I began to, uh, let me flip this screen around so you can see me. I noticed when I began to really explain, let's try this again. When I uh, began to explain the hypocrisy of the Protestant Christian denominational churches, that really they're not believing the Protestant Christian Bible. It's it's uh, that I notice our viewership immediately dropped off. Okay, I write about the uh, Trinity Pentecostal, the Southern Baptist, uh, Church of Christ, Disciples of Christ, uh, uh, Church of Christ, and uh, United Methodists. And all that, I am Roman Catholic. You know, I mean, most people generally don't have a clue about anything about churches. You know, generally the ordinary person just walking down the street doesn't know anything. Think, well, a church is a good thing. That's where people go. They're good people, and they don't they don't uh, do bad things. They're good people to go to church. And generally, people think the church will help you in your problem, your life, whatever that situation is. They honestly believe the church will help you some way or the other. Okay? And, and in most cases, it can't do very much for you. But a lot of people believe that. And they just believe it's a good thing. All right? What people don't understand at all, and now we're talking about people on the outside, and the people that's inside actually members, lifelong members of a Protestant denominational church. Mainline, we're not talking about some cult like Mormon, Jehovah Witness, or Roman Catholic thing. You know, Roman Catholic is a cult. Don't ever think that's a Christian church. Okay, now look. What is a Christian church? What's the foundation of the Christian church? Okay, now you can... You can look that up all you want, but here it is. Grace, justification, and repentance. That's the core foundation of belief of the Protestant Christian churches. All right. Grace means that it's God the Father in heaven, the spiritual substance we call God, that His benevolence, His grace, His love, His favor condescends down to humans who he created to help us to understand about him. All right? We cannot understand this spiritual substance called God. Number two, justification. The only way we can understand justification is through the first one, by God helping us by grace. By grace, we, we can read the story how that Jesus is God, that as God, when he died, he was able to take the sins of the world, past, present, and future, upon himself, and redeem all of mankind, enabling all people to come to the Lord, come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. All people can do that through this justification, through the God-man Jesus atonement. Okay, now mind you, it's grace that enables you to understand grace, it enables you to understand justification, and God's help helps you to understand repentance. Repentance means to turn to the teachings of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament only, no other book. All right, now. When you talk to people in the church or outside the church, they have no clue about any of this. All they know is about these guys read the Bible and say some nice things about different verses and gives us platitudes about how we should be a better person, help the community, build a house, paint a house, give some food or clothing during tornado, earthquake, or war, whatever. And that's about it. Be a good person, lead a good life, and God's going to judge you, and everything will be okay somewhere down the road, hopefully. 
That is a false message. This is the message of the Protestant Christian Church. And whether you agree with me or not, it's the simple truth. All right, now you just go check it out yourself. You'll see the foundation is on grace, justification, and repentance. It's not up to individual people to write their own doctrine and then create a doctrine where it's appeasing to people and people begin to follow them because they like what they're reading and hearing because there's no commitment. There's no, you understand, there's no repentance. There's no turning to obedience to the lifestyle that the born again, spiritually born again person has to lead. It's a lifestyle where you just go on like you're not even going to church. You live the same, dress the same, act the same, just like the people that are unbelievers. You understand, good moral people are unbelievers. Good moral people go to churches. There's no difference. They think they're a Christian, but really they're not. They're just good moral people on both sides. Both of them <coughs> are if. They don't accept the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. We end up in the lake of fire, not in the streets of gold to heaven. Remember, folks, this whole thing about religion from the get-go is about going to heaven or going to hell. There's no in-between. Okay, so the focus should be, am I going to heaven? And if I'm going to heaven, why am I going? Am I assured I'm going to heaven? What does the Bible say? And if I'm going to hell, what does the Bible say? I'm talking about the Protestant Christian New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. We are not talking about false counterfeit writings from the Roman Catholics, the Southern Baptists, the Methodists, Pentecostal. Don't read anybody's positional papers or doctrinal books. Don't go to that Christian bookstore and read them books. You get your Bible out and you begin to read the words of our Savior, Jesus, and, and, and see. And say, am I going? Does Jesus, here, here's, a, <coughs> here's a real quick test. There's two things you can ask yourself. Number one, the word says to love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, and strength, and your neighbor. So you got to ask yourself, do I love God with all my mind, heart, and soul, all my strength? Now you'll know that. It'll be yes or no. It'll be say, oh, well, maybe I should do a little bit more. Well, I think about not again. I, well, there you go. That's the first test. Number two, Jesus told all of his believers, go forth, teach, and make disciples. So if you consider yourself a, a spiritually born-again believer, say, go forth, teach, and make disciples. What's your ministry? What are you involved in? What's God got you doing? And if you say, yo, I'm just involved in Sunday school, or I'm just doing this on the side of it, if you're not in full time for Jesus, okay? Now I'm talking about you having a job and working and supporting your family, and then the ministry is after your family, not before, okay? But I'm talking about full time and for Jesus, leading people to the saving knowledge of Christ. If that's not your goal in life, then you're not spiritually born again. Now, mind you, right back to the first one. To love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, all thy strength, and your neighbor too. If you love your neighbor, you're gonna not going to let him die and go to hell. You're going to be telling him about the Lord Jesus, how to get saved, how to be spiritually born again. It's just an acid test here, folks. You can, you can do it or you not do it, but that's the truth. Either you're walking the walk or you're not. You'll know it. I don't have to tell you. The Holy Spirit has already come down into your life so many times and showed you the area where that now you just see your conscience. You don't even want to hear it. You understand? You had nothing to do with it. You're going to lead your life the way you want to. You know what? Because you're a rebel. The ways of the world are broad and there's a lot of people and there's few people going to find that narrow way because few people want to serve the Lord. But the opportunity to serve the Lord is there for everyone. It would be easy for me to join up with one of these false 
Protestant religious denominations and spout their doctrine. You understand? Because it narrows down into one set of viewpoints. Protestant religious doctrines always narrow down to one set of points that they think are important. They think this is the truth. And then they send forth missionaries. They send forth their Bible trained pastors with their masters, Bible college education, their doctorate, to what? To spouse to tell this one-sided viewpoint from their narrow-minded understanding. Then they go forth and make disciples from this narrow-minded theology that they have, that they think is right. And these narrow-minded theologies are all the all birth from an antichrist spirit. Because once you read the Protestant denominational doctrines, you will see that they do not accept, will not accept, will not conform to the truths of Jesus, the Apostle of Man, in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. They will pick and choose. And they all do it. And they all know it. Trinity Pentecostal too. Trinity Pentecostal probably at the worst of the whole lot. They'll who do the people sit there and think these are the really gifted people from God because they've been baptized in the Holy Ghost with this evidence of speaking in tongues. But yet the church house and preacher people sitting there driving their new Cadillacs and cars they don't care, whatever, as long as that church people come back in and get that money. And the people sit there just like the Baptists and the Catholics. They don't do nothing. Get worked up in a tizzy and some emotional thing, but for, you know what? The next week they're right back doing the same thing. Everybody's doing the same thing. The 9 to 5 job, and if you're dying going to hell, well, adios. They don't care because they're in their own little clique. The Protestant denominations are in their own little clique, all of them. They don't care about other people, other things. They're not concerned about nothing. Maybe they'll have one little person go to a mission over here, but you know, when, when that missionary goes out to another place, you know what that missionary's doing? He's making followers from their denomination. He's teaching their denominational beliefs to these people. So now you got somebody in third world countries becoming a little Southern Baptist. You got someone in third world country becoming a little United Pentecost or becoming a United Methodist or becoming Trinity Pentecostal or becoming a Episcopalian or the Mennonite or the Amish. These people are wrong. The truth is in the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That's the truth. And the only way you become spiritually born again is by you reading and you understanding. This thing about getting saved and becoming a Christian is not between you and some third party. There's no other person involved. When you become a Christian, it's between you and the Lord solo. No one else. You will decide. You will decide. Your brain, your understanding, you will decide. Do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do I want to give up the right to myself to the Lord Jesus Christ? Do I really want to follow his teachings in the Protestant Christian Bible? Do I really want to read and study? Do I really want to understand the meaning and depth of what he's saying here? Do I really want to think about this? Do I really want to lead people out of, out of the hellfire into the streets of gold and Jasper Walls to that place called heaven? Do I really want to do that? I've had family members to walk away from the gospel message. They didn't want to do it. Well, let me tell you, it makes no difference who it is or what it is, folks. You're going to have to make that decision for the Lord Jesus. When Jesus said to that guy walking that one day back 2,000 years ago is as true then as it is today. When he said to that young rich ruler who said, I've done all the good things that the Mosaic teaching said to do, Lord. 
All right? He did everything. And Jesus said, well, you haven't done one thing else. And you know what that was? Give away what he had and come follow Jesus. And that's what the Lord requires. He requires total, total, your mind. You can't have treasures up there and, and think you're going to pack them into the kingdom of God too. No. In your mind, you're going to get rid of all that luggage. All those things you care about are going to be pushed out. And there's only one going to be up there, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? You only want to serve Him. And how can you do that? Here, it's by the power of God. It's called grace. Grace enables you, gives you the strength and the courage to move forward in the things about God. Grace and grace alone. There is no other way. You can't do it on your own strength. When you, when you listen to this broadcast and archives are off YouTube or Facebook and you, you're going to listen to this, you think that you can do it yourself? You think you can choose when you're going to become a Christian? You cannot. You cannot do it. You can't say, well, in two weeks I'm going to go back to church. I'm going to become part of this. I called the pastor. He's got everything lined up. Everything's going to be great. I'm going, man. I'm going to do it. Well, you might go. You might go ahead and make that commitment and start working or working and doing something at that church house, whatever it might be. But rest assured, I don't make you a spiritually born again Christian. That just makes you a religious, pious person. Another person that's deceived by their own lust. Lust means that you desire something more than the Lord Jesus. All right, that's lusting after something else besides wanting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Whether it be a job, or whether it be your, your family. You, you understand there's so many things. You just don't want to give it up. I want my freedom. I want to do what I want to do. I am not going to church. I'm not believing in God. I'm, I don't care. I'm not talking about God. I don't want to be around people that talk about God. I don't want nothing to do with it. It's my life and I'll lead it the way I want. That's the general attitude. And that's across the board, folks. That's everybody in the world thinks the same way. It's not peculiar to one particular group of peoples. It's called sin and rebellion. All right? So where does everything come to? What point does things come back to God? It's like that circle. It comes back when we want to pray. Pray is talking to God. All right. So you want to talk to God. Hey, he's on the phone. Hey, come here. The phone's for you. It's God. I don't want to talk to him. I'm busy. Time to call back. Block that number. I don't want to hear from him. Prayer is talking to God. <coughs> you know what the phone, God's phone, you know what it is a lot of times? Your circumstances. Your circumstances. That's the phone ringing. Ring, ring, ring. All right. You know, I cannot tell you how many times I'd love to just say, everything's going to be fine. God's just going to bless your little life. Everything's going to be great. You're going to have everything you want. The job, the husband, the wife, the children, the car, your house. You're just going to have everything you want in life. There's just, And when you become a Christian, you're just going to have some problem, but there, all your blessings from God will be so great. You will enjoy life. You enjoy this world. You'll get the things that you want in this world. You'll be a happy camper. Oh, come. That's the voice of deception. This thing what Jesus is talking about, and he's saying, pick up the cross of self-denial and follow him daily. Understand, there's not a lot of people who want to do that. And the only way you're going to do any of anything is with God helping you. 
But once you make that transition from this world to His heavenly world, when you become spiritually born again by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, who recreates within you, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit of God coexists with you. Now mind you, sometimes that can be a battle with the Holy Spirit coexisting with you. It's not a walk in a park to be a Christian. All right? There is, there. I can't tell you how many heartaches and disappointments there are as a spiritually born again Christian, when you see the, the, the multitudes of people that you meet in your life and you share Jesus Christ in the way of salvation, and they don't want nothing to do with it. They want to continue their lifestyle. They want to be part of a Protestant church that allows them to do anything they want, and there's no commitment. There's no repentance. There's no turning to obeying Jesus. It's turning to do what I want to do as long as it's a law. Uh, I don't break the laws. <coughs> this is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. Hey, hi there. Welcome. Hey, hi there. Let's see, I can't read. Tisha, I guess that is, maybe. I'm not sure, Tisha. My name's Norman Edgar. I'm Protestant Christian missionary. Been one for 40 years. Amen. Been on every morning here on, on Periscope, all right, for since January. Let me flip this screen around, and I'm going to show you something. I uh, Hang on there. You'll see it. Come up here in just a second. All right. This is who we are, and this is what we're about. All right. I'm just going to. You can just. This is from our website, of course. Here's our website: how to become a Christian today .com. But this is the introduction. And if you notice here, I'm able to change this. As you can see on the pointer here, if you click that on our website. <coughs> I can change our introductory page to any language, 66 through Google Translate. Alright, this is what we're about. Alright, I'm sure if you're, uh, if you couldn't read English, you'd let me know. And a lot, I get a lot of, we get a lot of people from Russia. Alright, and here, this is our Periscope map here. And you'll see that we got people in the, the greatest majority right from the Middle East, but it's all over. We have over 100 locations worldwide, all the way down to the extreme right on New Zealand. You can see our view and heart count there. But this is, again, this is who we are. So we have a lot of people that don't speak English, and they come on, and they want to see what it's about. All right? Hey Guam, well good. Well, I know that you English is your first language in Guam. Is that right or not? Guam is English your first language? Alright, again, this is the introductory page of our, originally from the Philippines. Okay, well, well, if you're originally, you, you know English then, okay. Uh, so, and the Filipino dialect too, but. Ah, yes. Yeah, I had some good friends, uh from the Philippines and the five missionary tours in the Southeast Asia we worked with them in uh, Northwest Thailand they were from the Philippines yeah I've been offered some to come there several times all right this is about us here again we'll go to the top of the page all right I'd like for you to read this again and uh, 
again, I'd like for you to really understand this. I don't know if you are a Christian believer or not. Are you able to read this okay? All right. Oh, well, you're going to have to get saved. Seventh-day Adventist Church is, is not a Christian organization. Ah, uh, sorry. You are a religionist. The Seventh-day Adventists are like the Roman Catholics and like Protestant religionist. You're just a religionist. You have not been spiritually born again. Mm, yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. Now look, I want you to read what you're looking at right there. <coughs> now mind you, I think you're a I I think you are a good person, morally good, Bible reading, and you have professed with your mouth that you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and that you probably been water baptized, okay, before I'm Catholic. That's the same with me. Before I became a Christian believer, I was Roman Catholic. I was 28 years old when I became a Christian. All right. So now look at this. Okay. Continue to read this. Spiritually born again believers believe only one book. The Protestant Christian Bible. The seven day Adventists do not just believe the Protestant Christian Bible. New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. Set all Seventh-day Adventists, all Roman Catholics, all Protestant religionists follow the denominational writings of their people they want to follow. All religious writings are meaningless. Meaningless. There's only one truth. And that's when you read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus. If you listen to a denomination explain to you what the Bible means, you are not spiritually born again. A religious denomination cannot make you into a new creature in Jesus Christ. Only the power of God can. There are no other religious denominations that know the way of truth. The truth is only in Jesus Christ, the Apostle and Evangelist truth in the Protestant Christian Bible. When you become spiritually born again, it will be between you and God alone. There's no one else involved. There's no preacher man. There's no missionaries. It's you giving up your life to Jesus and obeying Jesus. If you listen to the Seventh-day Adventist, the Protestant religionist, the Southern Baptist, the Methodist, the Trinity Pentecostal doctrines, you are not spiritually born again. You're just a religious follower of some religion. That's the difference. There you go. Seven day Adventists, meaningless false religions created by people. Created by people. Rules and regulation, legalism. This is what you got to eat. This is what you got to do. This is when you got to work. This is when you don't. It's legalism.
I hope you can understand that. 99% of so-called Christian religions are not spiritually born again. Why? Because they pick and choose and create their own private interpretation of the truths of Jesus, the Apostle, and Evangelist. So, <coughs> as you can see, you have the opportunity there in the Philippines, like everyone else, to become spiritually born again. But you, Tisha, there, there are millions of people just like you. I've seen 40 years I've been a Protestant Christian missionary. And I ask spiritually, people that think they're actually spiritually born again. People that experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. We're talking about good people. Go to church, pay the tithes, do all that stuff. And then when you ask them to explain what they think these three things are, they don't understand this is the foundation of being a Protestant, spiritually born again Christian. All right? Would you like to take a little test, Tisha, to see if you understand this? So I'm not really, see, I'm really not saved, I guess. <coughs> so I'm not really a Christian? Yes, true. You're just a form. Would you like to take a test? A short test, okay? Just and uh, you can you either you pass or fail. You ready to take a short test <coughs> to see if you're spiritually born again? Tisha, would you like to take a short test to see if you're spiritually born again or not? You still with me out there? KK. I don't know what KK means. All right, sorry. You have to educate me. I'm 70 years old. I don't know the KK. <coughs> Would you like to take a test, short test, to see if you're a spiritually born again Christian? You want to see if you're really going to heaven or not? Okay. Would you like to take that test? That's the question, Tisha. Tisha, I guess. Okay. All right. Number one. Number one. Explain briefly what is grace. Okay. Just brief. What is grace? How do you understand grace? Briefly, save yourself from pushing the finger. What is grace? Okay. Again, this is the 0900 prayer request. Broadcasting daily. 0900, 9 o'clock in the morning. It's a Sunday morning, the 12th, and the time now is 9.40 in the morning. A.M. It's a hot day today. It's in the 90 degrees Fahrenheit already. And it's going to be up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit today. It's a hot day. But if you're from the Philippines, you probably know what that's like <laughs> all the time. All right, so. <coughs> Again, Tisha, what do you think? Grace means. Alright, waiting for you to answer that, girl. Alright. This is the 0900 prayer request time. My name is Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, have been for 40 years. I'm founder and director of LAM. 
Tisha. Okay, Tisha, looks like you got disconnected. The question, Tisha, was what was what does grace mean to you? Grace. That's your little test to see if you're spiritually born again or if you're just going to church. Just a religionist. Alright? <coughs> Sorry, something wrong in my in my net. Yes, I know. Happens all the time, Tisha. Again, the question you have, uh, you, you said you wanted to take a little short test to see if you're spiritually born again and going to heaven. So, the first question, what is, how do you explain grace? What is grace? Grace. Okay. What is grace? Alright. Grace. Alright. What is grace? Alright. Again, my name is Missionary Norman Ector. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. I'm 70 years old. My wife, Selma, 69. She comes on at 11 o'clock this morning. That'll be about in an hour and 10 minutes. Alright. Alright. Tisha. You still with me? Let's go, girl. Grace. What does grace mean to you? Alright. Alright. I'm waiting for your response. What does do what does grace mean? Okay. What does grace mean? Ah, uh, maybe. Tisha, uh, on in the English language, one to ten, one being not so good, grace is receiving. Okay, grace is receiving. All right. Hold on a minute. You see that? Do you see that, Tisha? Do you see that? Zero. All right, Tisha. Grace. Zero. Zero. You fail. That's not what grace means. Okay. Number two. We got three. Okay. <coughs> what does justification, what does that mean to you? Justification. What does justification mean to you? Justification. What does that mean? Justification. Justification. What does justification mean? Again, my name is Missionary Norman Edgar. By faith. Fail. <laughs> fail zero. Okay, that's two. You failed. Okay. Number three. What does repentance mean? Repentance. Repentance. What does repentance mean? What does repentance mean? OK. 
Okay, repentance. What does repentance mean? This is me, I'm broadcasting in Missouri, right here in the center of the U.S. This is the 0900 prayer request time. My name's Missionary Norman Edgar, I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Sincere request. Okay. Fail. Zero. All three. Zero. One, two, three. Fail. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> You understand that's you fail. You don't understand what what it's really about. Tisha, you're a religionist. You're a good person. You're a good church going religionist. Just like Roman Catholic, just like Islam, just like Buddhist, just like Hindu, just like Protestant religionist. Okay? Okay? Listen again. Listen again, Tisha. That's right. You, you are a good person. Islamic people, Muslim people are good people. Roman Catholic are good people. Hindus are good people. Buddhist people are good people. Protestant religionists are good people. Got it? Right. You're a good person, Tisha. Roman Catholics are good people. Buddhists are good people. Islamists are good people. Hindus are good people. <laughs> no, you, Tisha, are a good person. You're not spiritually born again. You're a good person. You are exactly the same good person as a Roman Catholic's a good person. Protestant religionists are good people. Protestant religionist, Buddhist religionist, Islamic religionist, Catholic religionist, Buddhist religionist, Hindu religionist are good people, but not born again. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we're not talking. <laughs> okay, well. No, it's okay. You're, you're, you, look. You, you, I understand your situation, okay? Okay, I understand your situation. You're like, do you know the word rebound? Rebound? Do you know what that means in English? When, when you say, oh, there's, uh, you're on the rebound. Something happened, so now you're this way. Something happened, you went this way. Okay? <coughs> Alright, so... Your life... Your life... Is in a rebound. You... Okay? Alright? You're... Looking... Now get this. You're looking for love... 
you're looking for companionship you're looking for fellowship you're looking for friendship you're looking for self-esteem you're looking for self-respect you're looking for camaraderie you're looking for friends you're looking so that you can have a, a fun life too you're looking for a lot of things in your life and you think that if you go to a church you're going to find good people so you can have a good life because they're going to church and they read the Bible so they must be good people <laughs> But no, you, Tisha, you okay. Okay, all right. Okay, well, Tisha, let me explain briefly these three things, okay? Grace means God's power, strength, love, and favor. Grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor to help all people to understand about God. God helps you to understand about God. All right? I want you to look at this. Look at this sign. Can you read that? It is by grace you have been saved. All right? The faith that you have is not from yourself. It is the gift from God. Get this. Gift from God. Grace. Grace is God's power. Grace is God's love to help you to understand, okay? Grace. You cannot say, oh, oh, today I'm going to become a Christian. I'm going to believe in Jesus today. No. Grace helps you to become a Christian. All right. Number two, justification. Justification. How are you justified before God? You're justified now to go to God because your justification is Jesus Christ. Jesus, when he made the sacrifice of his own life for us, for you, for me, all seven billion people, all people are justified before God by coming through Jesus Christ, by faith believing in Jesus Christ as the God-man Jesus, who died for the sins of the world, all the sins, all the punishment for all evil acts was done, placed on the body of Jesus on that cross. All the sins from the past, the present, and all future sins were placed on Jesus Christ, the God-man Jesus. That's why Jesus had to be God to take all that punishment. That's justification. We, through grace, understand justification because grace, God helps us, to understand this miraculous act of justification. Grace helps us to understand justification. Next one, repentance. Repentance means that you turn, turn your life to obedience to the truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist in the Protestant Christian Bible. New Testament, not the Old Testament. Listen. 
There's only one divine inspired book from God to man. That's the Protestant Christian Bible, Old and New Testament. There's only one Protestant Christian Bible. New Testament is the rule and guide for all spiritually born again believers. There's only one guide for everyday life for the spiritually born again believers and that's the truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. Not the writings of some woman, not the writings of some Pope, not the writings of some Southern Baptist, not the writings of some Pentecostal person, no. Only the truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. Now, get this. To be a spiritually born again, you have to understand this. You have to agree. This is before you can become a Christian. You have to agree before. Justification, you have to agree before. Repentance, you have to agree before. You become a Christian. Now get this. Now you understand these three. You understand grace, justification, and repentance. Now you, Miss Tisha, and everyone else, you have to decide this. Do you want to give up the right to yourself, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Will you become His servant? Not to the false SDA church, or not to any church. No Protestant churches. When you become spiritually born again, it's between you and the Lord. You and the Lord only. Not between me or some pastor. No. There's no... No. You will decide, Tisha, if you want to be a servant to the Lord Jesus Christ, take up that cross of self-denial every day and follow the teachings of Jesus, the Apostle Evangelist, the teachings, Tisha, that you understand and you alone, because you are held accountable for what you understand. If I have to explain to you, oh, this is what this means, and you say, oh, okay, Missionary Norman, thank you, I understand. No. You have to understand. You have to decide. The Bible says clearly in the New Testament, to love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, heart, and soul, and all thy strength, and your neighbor. Can you love everyone? Well, I can, but this guy over this person, this, this. So, you have to be willing to give up the right to yourself, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Tisha, you have to become a servant to the Lord. A servant is a servant. He's not the boss anymore. He's a servant. And that's what you have to do, I have to do. Are you, and, and when as a servant, you have one purpose in life, and that is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. According to a church, no. According to some Protestant denomination, no. According to what you read in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. If Jesus said, to go help that person. Jesus says to love that person. That's your commands. You have no choice. You can't say, well, I'm not going to do it. Well, you're denying Jesus in your life. This is a real thing to become spiritually born again. Jesus said to that little rich guy in the, in the New Testament story, the little rich guy said to Jesus, Oh, Jesus, I did everything. I obeyed the laws. I did everything. And Jesus told him, said, Well, go give away what you got and come follow me.
Becoming a spiritually born again Christian is not a is not an easy task. It takes the power of God, the supernatural power of God, grace, that supernaturally changes your life, and the Holy Spirit of God comes inside and coexists with your own spirit in your body. It's no longer you, Tisha, that live, but Jesus Christ within you, coexisting with you, giving you what? Power, strength, love, and favor to go to the world and tell them about Jesus Christ, the way of salvation. I advise you, Tisha, get away from that false Antichrist SDA church here in Bible. They are the Antichrist spirit. Get away from there. Get alone with your Protestant Christian Bible New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and the Man. Read His words. Get alone with the Lord. If you want security, peace, camaraderie, if you want a new life, a new purpose, a new destiny, Let the Holy Spirit of God reign in your life. Let Jesus Christ be your Lord and Master. Joy, happiness, and peace will come to you then. All right? I'm finished, okay? This is the 0900 prayer request thing. My name is Missionary Norman Ector. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary and have been. Sure, you can ask a question. Sure, go ahead, Tisha. What's your question? This is the 0900 prayer request time. Prayer is talking to God. Talking. Talking to God. God's got a plan and a purpose. But first, you got to talk to God. About gift of free will. Okay. That's right. Yes. Free will. It's called repentance. Turning to and agreeing before you can become a Christian, you have to agree, repent, turn to. Stop sinning, but turn your life to obedience to the words of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist. Not to a church or its doctrines, no. <coughs> Grace, justification, and repentance. Repentance, turning your life to obedience to Jesus. Do you want to do that? Nope. Most people want to follow a church. It's easy to listen to some guy tell you what to do. Because that guy wants your money. He wants to control your life. Amen. Simple as that. This is the 0900 prayer request time. I'm talking with a person from the Philippines. All right. About becoming a Christian. It's that simple. Understanding. Grace, justification, and repentance. So there's no such thing as free will. No. Just the opposite. Free will. Free will is to choose. Repentance. Repentance means to turn your life to obedience. Do you want to repent? 
do you want to turn your free will to obedience to Jesus? To the Protestant Christian Bible truths of Jesus the Apostle and Evangelist. Will your free will voluntarily turn to the truths of the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament? That's repentance. Your free will. You have to decide. Understand? <coughs> Grace, justification, and repentance. All right. O nine hundred prayer request time. That's okay. Look, we're not talking about your husband. Okay, we're not talking about your husband. Not talking about your husband. We're not talking about your husband. Talking about you, Tisha. You are not spiritually born again. I explained to you how to become a Christian. Okay? That's all I can do. Okay? If you want to submit your will and become spiritually born again, it'll be by you agreeing to grace, agreeing to justification, and agreeing to repentance. Yes. But I think you are not, you do not want to become a Christian today. I think you're on the rebound. Okay? So, you know, you know how to make sticky rice, right? You know how to make sticky rice? Do you know how to make sticky rice? Okay. You are like rice. You're going to have to cook. You're going to have to boil. You're going to have to sit in life's way because you're not ready to become a Christian. You're not thinking about Jesus. You're not thinking about your salvation. You're thinking about what you want in life. So you're just going to continue to cook. You'll continue your whole life. And so it's, it's my hope, Tisha, that in the future you'll give your heart to Jesus and love Jesus with all your mind, heart, and soul. With your free will. I hope that in the future you will do that. Alright? So, you have a good day in the Philippines, alright? This is Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Alright? This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you out there in Periscope land. Asking Jesus to help you in your life. No, well, it's not thank you so much. It's about you becoming a Christian. So it's I'm I'm really sad in that you're just you're not real, Tisha. You're just you're playing a game with God, and, and it's not good to play with God. All right, you're playing a religious game with God, and that's not good. Okay. This is the 0900 prayer request time. All right, I'm going to be getting off here now. My wife is going to be coming on at uh, 11 o'clock. So I'll see you guys again tomorrow morning at the 0900 prayer request time. This is Missionary Norman Hector saying adios. I think I will.